when one arm or the other two arms are subservient to the other arm, then it makes democracy very uninteresting. It makes it not what it should be. But for the Nigerian one, the project is not going for me. When I became minister, I told them I'll give her 100 million naira. Parliament is still a place for constant democracy, therefore, all attempts must be made to guide and guard its independence. People have an opportunity, but not making the best use of it. Our own democracy is African democracy. Let us work together as a family. We want to look forward to, 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 to a country where the infrastructure is placed and our work function. To know the meaning of restructuring myself, I don't understand the meaning of restructuring. But I found, I came to understand one or two things. Whenever somebody from the South talks of restructuring, we begin to wonder what does he really mean. This word restructuring has come more from the southwest than from any par other part of Nigeria. Of recent, like I said before, we begin to hear some restructuring on the southeast. Now, so, I be, and we, we hardly had this idea of restructuring when somebody from the south is a leader, is a president, or a head of state. So I begin, you know, I'm trying to give the idea of restructuring to my to myself because I really don't know. So I came to believe that uh, when people talk of restructuring, they either want Nigeria to come and have either a country with a federal, a national government, no state government, and only local government, or a country with uh, fewer states, fewer states, uh, federal government that will uh, uh, everybody is allowed to do whatever he likes. I don't know really. I don't know the meaning of that. Of recent, even the northerners have come to talk of restructuring too. They are also beginning to talk of restructuring. Restructuring to them, to a northerner, is break the country into whatever pieces you want. Those who want to be with you, they come together. Those who don't want to be with you, you go your own way. Uh, if uh, Nigerians believe that is good for us, I don't think. But I am firmly a believer of a federation, a government with states that are more or less autonomous. They have their own money. They spend their own money without interruption and they have also their own local government which they supervise. That's, that is what I believe in. I also believe that uh, the local governments we have should be stronger than they are now in such a way that they have more money, less stealing. If you have a local government that are strong with people who are decent, who don't steal, they perform, then we have we see Nigeria developing faster than we see. But when we talk of restructuring, we begin to see that while they talk of restructuring, they still have you know, the leaders are watching, you know, the, the, 
the, the, the governors in those areas are doing what they like. The people there never call them to order. And they only talk of the federal. So I begin to wonder what restructuring means. When you want to restructure, make sure the money you get, even in a dis, uh, a dis structured a country, you make use of it. Make sure that those who are in authority make use of the money given to them, or they get, not to, 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 to embark on useless projects on themselves, their family also. If you do that, then you can talk of restructuring. Just like Niger, the, the Niger Delta issue. The government has got bent over backwards and created, provided three avenues whereby they would get more money, more, more development. They have are given 13% derivation. They have created a ministry of Niger Delta and they have also created at the end NDC, NDDC. Now all these things are to pacify the area, but each time you go there, you see nothing. The people in the area don't talk about the money budgeted for those uh, people, the government there, the, the, the NDDC and the ministry, they don't talk, they talk of federal. What, what, even if you give them the way they, the, it is, even if you give them the whole um, um, public funds from federal government, it will be the same. It will be the same. We should be able to call our people that we see daily in authority to account before we talk of restructuring. To me, otherwise we have no basis or call a restructuring when we call, can't call the people directly we see every day. We'll be using the resources meant to be for our development. Right. And we call our restructuring. Right. We should do that. We should make sure, uh, in the case of Niger Delta, the minister is called to order. They do what they are supposed to do with the money allocated every year. The NDDC is also uh, called to account for the money they are given to, do, to perform there in those 10, 11 states. And of course the governors should also be called to account for the 13% they are given extra. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think uh, we are not fair to ourselves. Let's look at the National Assembly uh, for a few minutes. And you, you, you were a two-term senator. Very much. Um, meaning you were there for eight years, between True. 1999 and 2007. Yes. Right. Um, how do you defend the humongous amount of money budgeted for that arm of government when there appears to be little to show for it? You mean the, what, the amount of money given? to the National Assembly, exactly. or they give, uh, the, what we gave ourselves to. The, you go yeah, back the to the record, the, that go the back to the record. Go back to the record. Mm -hmm. If you have, you are a, a research student, go back to 1999 to 2003. You won't find this issue of consortium project, this, Billions of them. There was the issue of furniture allowance in your No, day. listen, one furniture allowance, what, it's fair. We had houses. The houses were not furnished. We had to furnish, so it, it was fair. Uh, that's 1999 to 2003. 2003 <coughs> to 2007, that was one issue of money came in. We began to have little allowances here and there. The amount of money a senator was earning then, 2003, 
to 2007 didn't cause any eyebrow. I felt it was a bit on the high side at that time. But if you compare it with what is happening now, I'm sure, I'm sure you think uh, we, were, we were saints those eight years. The first year I was earning 14,500 Naira. 14,500 Naira. That was what I was earning. And we, we complained though. We complained. We reached out to uh, revenue mobilization. Uh, they came, they see this. We sat down with them to see how things would improve. It improved, but there is a limit to what, what they could do. Mm. But really, uh, if you say it on the high side now, I agree with you. But then? It wasn't. Your, your financial allowance then was 5 million naira. So 5 million naira, what is 5 million naira? That's a lot of money. Financial money. allowance for four years. That's a lot of money. No, it wasn't. Furniture allowance for four years for a senator who had, uh, in my own case, I had uh, six uh, members of the House of Representatives from my zone. And they were also getting nearly as much as that. We didn't cry. Five million now is chicken feed. Then it was a lot of money. Well, if you say so, but it wasn't a lot of money, five million for a senator, even at that time. Five million will build classes in your in your constituency. Yeah, but was I not uh, will I not be entitled to furniture allowance? Well ministers were getting furniture allowance, not ele people not elected, appointed. Would I not be indicted to that? Or is it only uh, we who are supposed to be for the people who came into the National Assembly through you people that will not have anything to, 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 to you know, to, to see, to see that at least we are considered as human beings. Five million was small money for, if you compare it to a minister, we had large houses, look at them there, on top of a hill there and so on. Look at the, the furniture. Is it five million? We look at the barracks. We were living in what a is, barrack. What is the justification for a senator, for a minister, for, for officials of government getting so much money while their constituents are living in poverty? <laughs>
you, you must argue, I must argue to, for comparison mm. to see that let, you let's, have not... Let's not compare. Let's com let, let, us, let us look at this, a sitting senator and his constituent. A sitting senator living lavishly, his constituent living in poverty. It's not lavish at all. Five million. Think, even at that time, five million for, for furniture for four years. Mm. It's not much, but a senator, a a senator should look. No, no, no. A senator should look a bit better than some people in his constituency. That's uh, how it is. You all, all over the world. If you go to the to UK, you find a member of parliament. His house is uh, better than most of his constituents. That is uh, fair. If you go to China, those people in in the Politburo or whatever you call it. You know, they, they, they enjoy certain basic things for them to be able to perform. So it, it's, not, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not, what I hate is stealing. That is a fair, fair amount of money given to you by law. That is fair, I think. But if you think it's not fair, I don't know. I have, uh, what, what do you think? I, I didn't think it's unfair <laughs> for me. Elected, wanted to look nice, go, to go back to my concerns, to be able to have something also, even the salary, to, to be able to talk to my concerns who are complaining of uh, uh, they don't have water, you have to try to, even that was the That's reason. That's the argument, Senator. That five million can provide water for your constituents. Not my constituents. That, that five million can for, provide schools for, for your constituents. No, not schools. Not schools. Or health facilities. Not health, no health facility could, even my, in that time, you can build a health, even a health clinic for five million, never. You would do something anyway. Oh, no, you can contribute. <laughs> um, you can contribute towards the building of a health clinic. Mm. Yes, quite all right. And we did. We did that. We mm. did that. Mm. In my time, I was, I, res I was responsible for taking in health centers because that was my basic profession. Mm. At least eight in my constituency. Mm. Eight. My concern is large. I was able to take in eight health centers. I was able to have uh, to build uh, earth dams. You know, in the north, you know, you need dams, and uh, so on and so on, and electricity. But but uh, and also boreholes. But if you think of what we earn is the one that we'll use to go and build these things, you know, you're wrong. Yeah. It's you, not you, possible. You know, we're using what you earn, but, but using the available resources in this country for, for more... For, for go back to the drawing board and sit down and see the amount of money the country earns, and then say, okay, you, Senator, you can't go beyond this. You, Minister, you can't go beyond this. But, Senator, maybe because you are elected, you have a constituency. You have people who come prove to you here in Abuja to see you. You must give them transport money and so on. When you go there, somebody is in labor, somebody is in hospital, you must dip your hand in the pocket and help. A minister is not liable if he doesn't do this. But we are liable. Well, 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 well Senator Tafida, uh, let, let me ask you to, for a quick reaction, for your quick reaction to the, the suggestion that the business of lawmaking should be part-time and that the number should be reduced at both the, 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 the Senate and the House of Reps? Well, I don't know. I didn't find it funny 
for a lawmaker at the federal level to be part-time because in my own time, I don't know what they do now. I, maybe for my responsibility, I would be in the Senate 8 o'clock. Make sure what we call order paper is ready. Go to my office, attend to my concerns that would be waiting for me. Then I'll make sure I am in the Senate along with the Senate President by 8 o'clock, by 10 o'clock. And of course we close the sitting, we adjourn as we call it, by 2. Now, when you, there are many things considered on the floor that you have to go home if it is affecting your own committee to write report about there are visitations you have to, when you visit it's not just to show that you are a senator you have to report back to the national assembly you also have to receive your concerns in your own uh, either your residence or your own office I don't believe that part-time is good for it. Even on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, you have to be up to date on what you are supposed to. You have to table reports. You have to table things that you are asked to do. I'm not sure. I'm sure. I'm not sure if you can do all that in part-time, personally speaking. But if uh, people think it's all right, uh, but it's not easy. Mm. You will not have quality, quality mm. debate, quality report, quality everything. And you talk of the number. You know, the number is given is sensible. The every state, however large, like Lagos, like uh, Kano, Two, whether bias or just three, that's all. The idea is equality of states. So you can't reduce that. Unless if you want to reduce it to two, uh, every state to two senators, in which case you can, but you have to go through the constitution. If you can, I agree with that, but people will oppose it because the, the, representative will, the number of representatives will be reduced. Then the House of Rev is on population. You, the, the, represented, the representatives represent people. Bear somewhat to a large extent, equal number of people. And you can reduce. If you reduce, the things I'm saying will come to most of the numbers in some states will reduce, will be reduced. And then again the palaver. But if it is so, it's agreed, I have no quarrel. Yeah. I have no quarrel with it. Yeah. It can be done, but it's not going to be easy. The people will oppose it, not even the senators or the members of the House of Rep. In, in March 2006, um, why you, you were in the Senate? You were said to have collaborated with the uh this with the third term agenda was flying all over the place. We didn't know. I was the Senate leader. I didn't know. Uh Ken Inamani was the Senate president. You didn't know. And Myself and the Senate President were like twins. We didn't know. It was the tail end of it that we were informed formally, but we were just hearing it. So those who talk of but, but you defended it then. You what do you? What would you? Let, let me ask you. If you are called a leader, they are what the leader of my party mm. in the Senate. Yeah. And the party wrote 
they only they told us and they wrote. They came to tell us also in the sun that this is what we want. Unless you resign. Naturally, Why are you saying in, you did not know initially? Not at all. We didn't know. No, so but the only, they say only Mantu. And of course, Mantu was running the thing. People, he had a lot of resources. You know, they were going to his office to sign for this, to sign for that. We did, I didn't know. The, every senator in that, at that time will tell you that um, Ken in the mind, Senator, Senate former Senate President, will also confirm what I'm saying. We didn't know. Let me ask you uh, to look at Southern Kaduna for us. You, you are from the north. Very much so, and I know every part of the, the state. Every part, right. every inch of the state. So how, as an elder in that state, how should this issue of killing to me in the South be resolved? And, 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 and what is your reaction to, to the governor's comments at a time that he was paying Fulani Hatman? The, 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 other, the other issue is that attributed to the governor there, El Rufa, that he, he did say that he was paying people to stop the killings in, in, in the state. How do you respond to that? That was in the news a while back. He was paying people to stop the killing. Well, to a governor should be able to do anything to stop the killing of human beings in the state. To stop the killing. Why would you pay people who are responsible for action, a negative action? Well, I don't know who, who are responsible for. Look, you don't know the Kaduna state. So you, I think you are just shooting in the dark. The, 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 the newspapers, the radio, television, were telling you stories which you are using. Kaduna State, as you know, the vast majority of the Christians are in the south, and the Muslims are also in the north. Now, if we live for years together, it's my school in Zaria, where I come from, were populated by many of them from the south, middle school in those days. We didn't know the difference. There were Christians, Muslims, and so on. Now we we're going to our mosques and churches and so on on the days that uh, were allocated, and we, we we didn't know the difference. Now politics, of course, will bring about this division, and I don't think it's fair for a majority. If it is so, then no, no part of this country can live in peace. If a majority feels he must load on the minority, there will be no peace. We live in peace. I live, my father served in the southern part. He served in Zangwankata. He served in Kagarko. In those days when I was a secondary school student, and uh, there was nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Is it possible? No, it's not possible for even uh, anybody from the area to go to the south to serve. They kill him. And I think we should sit and think. If you are a Nigerian, you are entitled to live and work anywhere. If you have a business that is useful to the people there, you should live and work there. Uh, the Fulanis are known all over the, the, the country, not only in southern Kaduna. And the number is not all that large for them to be able to kill southern Kaduna people. It's not large. Unless we are talking of the opposite, because they are minute minority. The Fulanis are minute minority in that area. How can they kill a majority? Is it possible? I don't agree with that. So I, how can these issues be resolved? Yeah, well, uh, give and take. Uh, now, well, put it in your mind that what, if uh, whether you are a Christian or a Muslim, 
whether you are a rich man or a poor, you can live in any part of your state. Let's start with the state. About, uh, before we go to the Federation, because we have people from other parts of the country living in the southern part and in the northern part. And we live peacefully. You see the problem about, let me tell you the trick. You see, things happen in this country and we don't take lessons from that. If you, a Yoruba man is living in Zaria and you kill him, the majority of which are House of Fulani. The Yorubas, his kinmen in the southwest, will feel bad. So if the number is large in the killing, they will take reprisal. They will start killing. So what is the use of killing somebody who is working with you? You have been together. We have intermarriages mm -hmm. together. Why should you kill him? For what reason? For what reason? We should live in peace. We should understand that. In the near future, the emergence of a new mega power. It is possible. Because I still believe that PDP will not make it. I'm not very sure. I think because the disagreement, the rancor is so much that it's difficult for them to sit together again. Let me, let me ask you to quickly uh, look at the 2015 elections. For the very first time in the history of this country, a sitting president lost uh, an election. Uh, what, would, what do you think? <laughs> well, I've given you part of some of the reasons. Stealing, the corruption, the dishonesty was massive. People knew about it. Massive. And people were dissatisfied with the way things were going. That's one. Make sure that whoever is a visitor, as you call them, or foreigner, or visitor. I don't see why somebody from Zaria should be regarded as a non-indigent in Kavanchan, or somebody from even Kano. Because you, you, you can't develop your country, your economy within yourself in Nigeria. You must have people coming in. Economy is developed by people. So allow them, be friends to them. They too will be friends. And you, will you also have the, the chance to also go out and uh, develop yourself and come home and so on. That's how things are done. Let, let me ask you to briefly look at your, your time as High Commissioner in the United Kingdom and, and tell us how you were able to manage the relations between the two countries in spite of the negative image um, um, of, of Nigeria in the eyes of the international community. Vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, um, I know you also took up the BBC on a documentary about Lagos. Yes. Well, it, when I went there, actually relations were beginning to build up. You know, since uh, Obasanjo's time, uh, he spent a lot of his time trying to build relations between 